Hey, so Survivor Series was last night, but this list was written and edited before that, so let me just quickly cover all my bases. Oh, thank goodness Survivor Series is finally good again. God, Triple H is the best. Take two. Bloody hell, what a disappointment. The endings to the War Games matches were so stupid. I thought Triple H's WWE was supposed to be better than this. God, wrestling's the worst. Take three. Can't believe The Rock returned and took a poo in a plastic bag and then threw the plastic bag at Roman shouting, I'm Rocky Poo Poo and now you're Rocky Poo Poo too. There we go. I think that's covered the most likely options. So last week we talked about the best Survivor Series pay-per-views. Now let's talk turkey. And by turkey, I mean this goddamn turkey. I'm Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known and here are our 10 worst Survivor Series pay-per-views ever. And fair warning, this one's going to get a little grumpy. So if you do want to see something a bit more happy, something celebrating wrestling, then check out last week's list. It's There's loads of really good Survivor Series pay-per-views on it. Hooray! Number 10, 1990. Survivor Series is somewhat famous for in-ring debuts, positioned as it is as a major platform with six months to build to WrestleMania, but also not a show that traditionally sees major feuds blown off. Sting debuted at Survivor Series, so The Shield, The Rock, Scott Steiner, Kurt Angle, but 1990 is infamous for one blistering debut, the first appearance of a superstar that would define the industry for decades to come, the turkey. The gobbledygooker, Eddie Guerrero's brother in a turkey suit who burst out of an egg and danced with Mean Gene. Also, The Undertaker was there. Take his debut does make the show a huge milestone in wrestling. Of course it does, but the actual rest of the show sucks with the booking complicated by the tried once but never again gimmick of all the survivors from each match being put into a big ultimate survivor series match in the main event a convoluted and nonsensical stip provided to give hulk hogan and the ultimate warrior two wins on the night instead of one gotta love it when hogan and warrior win twice. Number 9, 2015. There are worse shows in terms of in-ring quality, but 2015 was a difficult year for WWE. The Roman Reigns experiment was not working, and 2015 Survivor Series was just a wearying example of how committed WWE was to it, much to the disregard of their fans. Seth Rollins blew out his knee and had to vacate the WWE Championship, so a tournament was held to determine the new champ, unlike the 98 Deadly Games tournament, which swerved the fans with expert effect, crowning a megastar heel. 2015's tournament was predicted to a fault featuring Roman forever miscast as an underdog big dog and wasting the huge match of Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose in a nine minute main event that never got off the blocks. Then Sheamus cashed in and no one wanted him or Roman at the top. So basically, Undertaker's entrance was cool, I suppose. I guess it, it wasn't as bad as his 30th anniversary. We'll get to that. Reluctantly. Number eight, 2008. Bad show, this. The Boston crowd did its best, but even they are miracle workers. Even they couldn't rally themselves for the horrific bait and switch of Jeff Hardy being removed on the day from the triple threat match with Triple H and Vladimir Kozlov, leaving the latter two dudes to wrestle in abject silence, save for the occasional dirge of a boring chump for Edge returned to win the thing. John Cena returned to beat Jericho for the big gold belt, which at least sent the Boston crowd home happy because John Cena's from Boston, they're like, yeah, hey, he's from here. He's from here. Park the car in the yard. Honestly, though, there was a bunch of dross on this show. The whole Jeff Hardy being found unconscious in his hotel room stuff felt horribly uncomfortable. The Take a Big Show casket match was slow moving and tedious. The women's elimination tag match took place largely to crickets, featuring hordes of divas being killed off by traditional moves to no reaction. The opening match saw the Survivor Series being HBK, Rey Mysterio, and the great Carly, which is palpably strange. Orton winning yet again at Survivor Series. There's just not much to recommend the show, especially if you're not a fan of Cena wins lol. Number seven, 2013. I really like one match on this show. The opening elimination match where Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns come back from being 5-2 down to win the match and preserve the whole, hey, the shield is pretty cool. Thing. Everything else on his card, though, like your dad, sucked weirdly. The cast of Total Divas defeated the cast of Hey But What About Wrestling, though. Daniel Bryan and CM Punk beat the Wyatt family in the middle of their hot streak. John Cena vs. Del Rio was a competition of who could the fans care the least about. And then, holy shit, the main event. Randy Orton versus the leader of the Yes Movement, 
big show. Absolutely baffling how they tried to heat up the Giant with Daniel Bryant's yes chance in the build to this match, which ended up being performed to the kind of silence reserved for Ollie Davis lovemaking, overwhelming crowd apathy, a stupid finish, both combined to make the main event one of the worst matches of the year and a nightmare slog for all involved. Number 6, 1991. Most years, WWE at least pretends that Survivor Series is a big deal. One of the big four carries a bit of hype, but 1991 was a really strange year where Survivor Series, the pay-per-view, existed basically to sell another pay-per-view, namely this Tuesday in Texas, a secondary B-level pay-per-view, which was set to take place six days later on Tuesday in Texas. Like Survivor Series, which I'll remind you was a pay-per-view, opened with a clip from superstars of the snake bite angle between Randy Savage and Jake Roberts, with the clip hyping a singles match, not at Survivor Series, but at this Tuesday in Texas. It's mental! The opening tag match, which was also Ric Flair's first pay-per-view match in WWE, was pretty darn good, up until it ended with five men getting disqualified at once. The Sergeant Slaughter elimination tag match was f***ing dreadful. The main event three-on-three -three match was a bit boring. The Rockers elimination match was okay. And in the middle of the show, bizarrely, The Undertaker beat Hulk Hogan for the WWE Championship, which was a seismic thing, but came at the end of a bad match and mostly only existed to hype the rematch, which was set to take place at, you guessed it, this Tuesday in Texas. Number 5, 2021. What is it with Survivor Series and stupid eggs? The last Survivor Series under Vince McMahon's watch felt appropriately tarred with all of his worst and weirdest excesses. First of all, he was on the show, scuttling on screen like the bizarre melted crab that he's become, showing off a golden egg to what I can only describe as whooping deference from employees terrified for their job security because he just fired a f***ing bunch of them within a week. The night was hyped as a celebration of 25 years of The Rock, and he only appeared in awful Red Notice product placement segments, and also via Egg, and also via a battle royal that was actually supposed to be about him, but was actually about pizza, and none of this is made up at all. The f***ing Golden Egg, naked corporate shilling, nonsensical backstage nonsense, awful air quotes comedy featuring great wrestlers Pratt falling for brand awareness, and annoyingly, some really good matches lost in the middle of it all with Charlotte versus Becky and Biggie versus Roman Reigns both being really solid. Bianca Belair being given a great spotlight. These are all good things, all ultimately forgotten, of course, because of the egg. Number four, 1994. You know you're in trouble when the best part of your show is middle-aged Bob Backlund beating Bret Hart for the WWE f***ing championship because of towel-based trickery. Now, to be fair, the match itself is actually fairly good sports entertainment. Owen Hart delivers a really great hill performance at ringside. Everything else on the show sucks, though. The first elimination match ends in a five-man countout, which is a kind of booking nonsensicality that can get in the bin. You can't count out men who aren't legally in the match, ref. What the dick are you playing at? King Kong Bundy is a survivor in another match, which even for 1994 was very stupid. The Undertaker versus Yokozuna with Chuck Norris at ringside was heartbreakingly tedious and a real blow to anyone who enjoys Chuck Norris facts because he didn't do anything interesting. But the real crowning turd on the cheesecake was the clown match because the clown match is always the worst part of a Survivor Series. Doink and three mini clowns versus Jerry Lawler and three mini kings called Sleazy, Queasy, cheesy and they won they won in a clean sweep fucking life number three 1999 hey you know what's fun lies and boy howdy did wwe lie to its fans at survivor series 99 despite this being one of the hottest periods in wrestling history wwe was starting to eat itself with ludicrous storylines endless dqs and the kind of car crash poison that would shortly destroy wcw from within keeping in line with that this show is super weird there's a DQ in Kane vs. X-Pac, bizarre old women defeating actually talented younger wrestlers, Hardcore Holly being a sole survivor in a match involving both Edge and Christian and the Hardys, gotta love that Bob Holly push. Big Show beating four guys by himself, a big messy undercard, but don't worry, what a main event we've got for you tonight. Triple H vs. The Rock vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin, unbelievable! and the crowd were stupid to believe it, with Austin not being medically cleared, and the company knew that, yet they only pulled him from the main event on the show itself, after everyone had paid to see it being hit by a car and replaced with The Big Show, who went on to win the WWE Championship, some hateful bollocks. 
Number two, 2020. I hate this show so much. I mean, it's in the Thunderdome, WWE's uncanny cube filled with fake cheers and digitalized cretins. Crowdless wrestling is intensely dull to me, so this show is always going to feature highly on this list, even without the bizarrely terrible stuff. WWE made its entire women's division look ridiculous in an awfully booked elimination tag match that was basically just one big punchline to the Lana storyline. Raw, clean swept Smackdown for no reason. A weird heel versus heel match between Zayn and Lashley. Admittedly good Good matches between Drew and Roman and Sasha and Asuka, but there's no crowd. So honestly, that they are not ones that I will ever want to watch again. And yes, this is subjective and it's my list, so do one. But finally, the insane Undertaker farewell ceremony. It's it's maddeningly bad. A bunch of old men walking to the ring and clapping, Vince stumbling his way through a speech, Taker talking by himself to a bunch of screensaver people and then ambling away it's not wwe's fault necessarily because you know the world and that but it is the worst possible end to one of the best possible careers and number one 1993 i hate this show even more. To be fair, considering the number of changes to the card, it's very likely that WWE also hate this show. Mr. Perfect was supposed to be on it, but was replaced by Randy Savage. That's good. Savage was the first person eliminated for his team. That's bad. Jerry Lawler was taken off the card after allegations of sexual assault, replaced by Shawn Michaels and his knights for no kayfabe reason whatsoever. It was a really dull match. The Doinks comedy match was about as funny as a burning hospital the only title on the line the entire night was a championship that wasn't even part of the company the smoky mountain tag championships contested the match the crowd could not even give the shiniest shit about and the main event was a predictable slog still trying to make lex luger a thing despite the company having soundly dropped the ball on him at SummerSlam with a sincerely lame win by count out victory parade there is nothing on this three hour show to recommend it to anyone anyone you should avoid it at all costs and that's our list. What's your least favorite Survivor Series pay-per-view of all time? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. And make sure you subscribe to Parts of Unknown for more silly wrestling content. And never forget to jam that jam.